Hello again, Chris Lee of Southeastern 16 here to talk South Carolina football. When we do that, we go to my friend Chris Clark of Gamecock Central. Chris, thanks for joining us today. I appreciate you having me. Always good to be with you, Chris. What was that like being in williams Bryce Stadium for the a Because I was watching from TV. We were doing a live stream, and they're showing the stands. I'm like, all right, there's going to be a field storm here. That looked like an electric environment in Columbia. Yeah, you know, we were we were joking about it. Actually, uh, was with my colleague Wes watching that game. We don't watch every game together, but that one we did in person. And um, you know, Wes looked around at one point and he said, "This isn't a, a fake sellout." You know, like South Carolina yeah. sold out every home game, and and those are can be sliced differently. You know, you look up in the top corners of the upper, and they're full. You know, yeah. and so look, I mean, it, it's a hard place to play at night when everybody's keyed up and people certainly were keyed up for this one um, because of a top 10 opponent because of the result from the past week beating Oklahoma the fans are ready they, they showed up showed out and the team you know gave them it, it was kind of the perfect game yeah to keep the fans engaged right you start out hot it gets close it's tied at halftime so you're still engaged and then you go on and, and dominate the second half, and it was a lot of fun. So people stayed, and uh, then they then they stormed, like you said. I feel like the script of how they can win is starting to flip. I mean, I, I say that it's, it's one game, right? I don't know that you draw any sweeping conclusions from one game, but there's some interesting things there, right? Like when they've lost the turnover margin, by my count, they're 0-3. And yep. it felt like earlier it was do just enough – a, a little bit similar to the way Vanderbilt, their opponent this week, has won. And, yeah. you know, try to get the breaks and, and hope the offense, you know, is, is good enough to to do it. Now they get 530 yards, 7.6 yards per play. Rocket Sanders has 230-something yards per scrimmage. Um, you know, Lenore Sellers wasn't as efficient in terms of completion percentage, but he was super effective. Is that a, a one-off, or is that something you feel like they can replicate going forward? I think it's, you know, are you going to replicate that amount of yards, that amount of success on the ground? You know, maybe not, but you don't, you don't have to do it to that yeah. extreme, right? Texas A&M, really good defense, which we knew. Talented, coach well, play hard. They'd only given up. Their high watermark this season was 24 points. Gamecocks got 44 now you may say, well, oh, well, one of those came late off a turnover. It doesn't matter, right? I mean, yeah. um, it's an impressive performance. Those count, too, I think, on the scoreboard. <laughs> they definitely count. <laughs> but but I think you're right. Like, we have seen – we've seen the formula of how South Carolina is going to lose games. It's turnovers. Every game where they've lost the turnover margin, they've lost. They've won every game where they've won the turnover margin, except for the Akron game. It was even, and they were way better than Akron, right? Not a good football yeah. team. So that that really is it. The the formula is play great defense, uh, get some win the turnover battle, run the ball, do enough offensively. That's been it so far. Do enough offensively, like you said, Chris. But you also this offense is not built to go put together multiple seventy five yard drives in a game. You do need some explosive plays. Yeah, and we saw that right. Uh, but I think it was just a the perfect storm offensively. You know, A and M got pressure up front, but the front you give up zero sacks because Lenore Sellers pulls a complete Houdini act. You're able to do things like, hey, it's third and eight. We're gonna run quarterback power. And Lenore Sellers runs over their corner for an extra yard. Rocket Sanders had some explosive plays. You didn't turn it over. The one turnover you were going to have on a fumble before halftime was wiped out by an A and M penalty, right? So yeah. they just they played actually the, the two styles of these teams are kind of similar, and South Carolina played it better on that particular night. Yeah, I think the the landmine, and you just alluded to it, is offensive line. They're giving up sacks even after that game at, at nearly yeah. a fourteen percent rate. I think it was over fifteen before the A and M game. That that's a lot. Uh, do, do they get better there? Do they have some answer in reserve with health, or is that just a matter of, of sellers knowing? more on escape routes, when to get rid of the ball, those kind of things. Like, is that is that something that looks better going forward, however you slice it? Yeah, I, th I think it was um, 
I, I keep using the word perfect storm, but it was up front. You know, um, it's not like A and M got no pressure. They got yeah. actually a good bit. There are multiple plays that that had to have been an ugly film review for them on Sunday. They're probably yeah. sitting there going, "We should have had five sacks and a couple turnovers," but they didn't. And part of it was, you know, the biggest part of it, quite frankly, was just Sellers was just just brilliant. Um, when you look at the sacks, it, when when teams are giving up sacks, people always just go the O line, right? Yeah, yeah, it's a big part of it has been the O line. Whether it's one on ones, you're going to lose some playing in this league anyway. But too many one on one losses. The biggest thing is too many just bust up front, twists, stunts, things like that. They still have problems with that against AM. The backs and tight ends have not been brilliant in pass pro either. And then you had a young quarterback who at times was holding on to it too long. That part is improving. I think the pocket presence of sellers is getting better as he plays. Are those other things, can they marginally improve? Yes. Is this going to be an elite pass pro team by year's end? No, definitely not, especially with the teams that you have to play. Um, but, you know, so I don't think it's going to be a zero sack performance, you know, against Vandy, against Missouri, against Clemson. Uh, but can you get a little better? I, I do think so. I, I want to ask you in just a minute about the matchup this week with Vanderbilt and, and some things of interest there. Before I do, reminder, Bet Online is the world's most trusted betting platform. And your number one source for online betting from all the earliest odds to live in-game betting. On BetOnline provides you with all the action and the ability to watch the games as they happen with the world's largest selection of odds on everything from football, NBA, NHL, to entertainment and political props. Head to BetOnline today to get in on all the action with America's most trusted site for online wagering. Bet online, the game starts here. All right, flipping forward to Vanderbilt this week. South Carolina has dominated that series 15 in a row I think I think South Carolina now has got the longest winning streak against Vanderbilt of anybody which is crazy that is um I, I don't know if it means anything or not given the nature of college football and you know the, the teams look so different from year to year but but it just is but I, I want to ask you D Diego Pavia and and my concern for him as I watched him against Auburn last week he's taken a lot of hits he does not look like he's got the same burst, but let's just play along. Let, let, let's say he gets better. He looks more like the Diego Pavia that we've seen before. Um, d Does Carolina's pass rush work against it or, or for it, or is it somewhere in between? Because, I mean, sometimes the last thing you want to do with that guy is push him out of the pocket and, and turn him upfield where – it just seems like when they have to have a play, he just about always makes it. Um, sure. how, how do you see that? Yes, yeah, it's, it's a good it's a good point. I mean, your your pass rush integrity, your lane integrity has to be on point in this game. Um, you know, Marcel Reed from A and M is a very different player than Pavia, but bear with me, he's very mobile, right? Yeah, and, and obviously Pavia is very mobile. Um, early on in the game. You're sitting there, the A and M South Carolina game. You're going, man. A and M is is kind of holding them at bay. Um, now they were getting some pressure. Dylan Stewart, as a, I think he had nine pressures in the game, which is insane. Yeah. Uh, he, you know, he and the other guys were able to get after Reed a little bit, but they did a good job of helping out, getting the ball out fast. Reed getting the ball out just in time. Some play action to kind of hold things up. Um, but when it became a throw game, that's when South Carolina was able to to make some things happen. So, you know, I, I think Pavia is, you know, more experienced. He's more crafty. He keeps his eyes yeah. downfield more. It's going to be, I think, a bigger challenge yeah. for South Carolina. Um, it So I would answer the question by saying it could work against them if they get out yeah. of sorts. They get so keyed up that they're trying to get a sack and just miss a guy or, or – don't do their job and get out of their lane. They do play a little bit chaotic up front, which really, really helps them. It can yeah. hurt them every now and then. Um, so I, I think both sides, I think Pavia is going to get some of his, and I think this Gamecocks defensive front will also do the same. But one thing that we know is, you know, if you don't have a good plan for this Gamecocks defensive front, they can, God they can help definitely you. wreak havoc. Yeah. 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 I, I think the issue with Pavia like th there are several quarterbacks in the league that are more athletic than him. Carolina just faced one of them. Mm -hmm. I think the problem is he is 
he is about as smart a football player as I've ever seen. Like yeah, his decision absolutely. making on a dime, like he will do things that you don't see anybody else do. I mean, look, you, you've got to have a degree of athleticism. Like they can't throw me out there um, <laughs> and convert yeah. third and 13 into a, a touchdown or a first down like he does. But th- that's that's the thing. And I, I, I do think Vanderbilt has played a little bit more conservatively. Like they haven't thrown every trick in the book at teams the last couple of weeks. You've seen tight end passes. You've seen, you know, I, I don't feel like they've used jet sweeps and stuff like that as much. I'm very interested to see how they call the game next week. Yeah, me too. And I mean, Tim Beck, their offensive coordinator, does a great job. There's, you know, there's eye candy. That's They have at times been aggressive. Like you think about the Alabama game, you think about the Texas game, like some of the decisions that Clark Lee's made. And, and Pavi is just completely unbothered. He is unafraid to go make a play. And he'll, yeah. he'll take risks, and usually they pay off, right? So I think for South Carolina, if you're kind of looking for a key defensively, and we hit on this a little bit, you know, with, with – your pass rush rules, your lane integrity, um, not letting him get out at the expense of trying to make a play that maybe you can't make on a guy like him. Um, I think it's just the play's not over till it's over type of thing, yeah. right? You're going to have to cover a receiver for an extra second. You're going to have to make sure you get Pavi on the ground. You know, it's not even – I mean, Vanderbilt does a good job with the run game as well. So uh, there are a lot of challenges schematically with this game, but – I think just, look, everything starts with Pavia. Um, this Vandy team's going to go as he goes, and I think that's priority number one for South Carolina is to not, you know, make somebody else beat you other than him. Yeah, I think the key stat's going to be turnover margin. Vanderbilt's turned it over, I think, five times all year. Three of them were in the Texas game. Uh, the fumble stats are pretty interesting. Carolina's forced 22. That is an awful lot. They've only recovered seven. Uh, which, yeah. you know, luck luck of the draw, you know, you make it half and, you know, you wonder if, if five and three is, you know, six and two or seven and one at this point. So that that's interesting. I think Vanderbilt, you know, that's not something that they do is turn the ball over, but you, you don't face a team like this every day for, for sure, a defense like that at least. Fumbles lost. They've lost nine. They've they've given it away fifteen times. I assume a lot of those are pressure on sellers and and in an end or a linebacker knocking the ball loose. Yeah, at one point, Chris, he I think led the country individually in fumbles, and it was a big yeah. you know storyline against Oklahoma. Did a really good job on that front. He he only really had one play that was close to a turnover, which was a, a ball he shouldn't have thrown on the sideline. It, it did not get picked. Probably should have been. And then, like I said, the A&M game, he had a fumble that was stepped up into the pocket and A&M knocked the ball out, but it was wiped out by a penalty. Shane Beamer did point out, hey, we're looking back at the game tape. There's a few times carrying the ball. You got to have better ball security, you know? Yeah. And so they'll keep harping on that. Rocket Sanders actually had a fumble in the A&M game where, I mean, the game ended up being a 24-point margin of victory, but they could have gotten there faster if not for that play because they were driving into A&M territory and had all the momentum um, that kind of knocked the wind out of their sails momentarily. So, yeah, it, the turnovers have been an issue. Again, go back to the general point. This team doesn't turn the ball over. They win. If yeah. they do, they don't. And so that is the main thing when you look at this game. And I feel about this game like I do just about any other SEC game this year. It doesn't matter. Ah, uh, you know they're they're not ranked in the college football playoff, or this team won last doesn't week, matter. or this team. None of that matters. It's about who plays the best on a given Saturday. Yep. That's it. That's what it comes down yeah. to. None of that other stuff matters. These teams are going to be pretty close to each other, as just about every SEC team, probably more than we thought, yeah. is close to each other this year, right? So turnover yeah. margin is is probably your biggest indicator this year of how a game's going to go. Yeah, and I, I'm with you. I, I think that, like, I'm a big stats guy. I like to look in the matchup, see where does one team do something that the other – but, I mean, I, I think just being ready every week because there's a lot of parity um, and, and just, you know, finding a game plan, maybe finding something that somebody else hasn't done or, or big things. So, I, I, I do think Carolina on paper has got an advantage in this one, but I, I think your point's good. All right, I got two more questions before I get you out of here. 
one, one is health. Um, how does Carolina look this week? Yeah. Who's who's out? Who's who's banged up? Who's questionable? There's really a couple main guys to watch. One was Mazio Bennett got yanked down by his helmet. No call, by the way, um, in, yeah. in the A and M game. Um, and so that it looked bad, you know, it, it looked bad on the lower body, upper body, um, looked like more of a scare than anything. It sounds like he's going to be good to go. Beamer said that he practiced, he's practiced this week. The other guy to watch is DeAndre Jules, defensive tackle. He was a transfer this offseason, six year guy, a guy that when healthy cannot just give you some snaps, you know, 20, 30 snaps. He can give you some impactful snaps. He's a, he's a good player, not just a depth guy, um, even though he's not a starter. Beamer said he's probably out. Not he wasn't ruled out 100. percent We'll check the injury report this week. Um, they've been okay. They've been without him for a few games now. Would love to get him back, um, but not looking promising on that front. Other than that, they look uh, to be in pretty good shape this week. All right. Last question: Were you surprised that that Carolina didn't make the first college football playoff ranking? I thought like either them or Vanderbilt, yeah. maybe both of them would get in. Yeah, like with Vandy, I get it. The Georgia State loss is sure potentially disqualified, but I mean they've lost to LSU by three points. They've lost at Alabama by two. Then and then the Ole Miss game, they just kind of got beaten, you know, pretty badly there. But yep. I mean, it, Louisville gets in with three losses. I'm, I'm not, you know, but maybe, maybe if you look at it under a microscope, Louisville's wins are better. I don't know. I'd have to look at it, but I, that that to me. I guess I, I don't really understand it. And and to me, like if Louisville's in, hey, if if Carolina wins out, we've talked about it before. You know, to, to me, the resume is gonna have a case. It may it may not be playoff at that point. It's gonna depend on what yeah. I do, but certainly big time bowl. So let me answer the question first and then give some thoughts. So no, I'm not surprised they weren't in it. Um looking at you know, and I think the main reason is that third loss by their name, you know? Yeah. But then you look at it and you get, so I'm not surprised if you just said, yeah. Hey, they, they're not in it. What do you think? I would say not shocked. Are they one of the best 25 teams in the country? Probably. Yeah. So I think so. But at the end of the day, there's an element of here's your record, right? Um, now that said for Louisville to be in, you know, I think the argument there is, yes, they've got three losses, but they beat another team who's in the college football playoff rankings, and that's Clemson. Yeah. But for Carolina, they beat a team who's ranked higher in Texas A&M, right? So yeah. I think from a schedule standpoint, it's kind of hard to argue that South Carolina isn't a more difficult schedule. Yeah. Um, so I, I did think that part was strange. You know, there are other things like, you know, Penn State being ranked higher than Indiana. There are other things like um, why is Clemson in at all? What have they done? You know, who, who yeah. have they beaten? And I think there's still, Chris, at this point with the college football playoff, it's kind of like the AP rankings in a way. Yeah. Because some yeah. teams are still living off their name. Or if Clemson was uh, a six and six team last season, they wouldn't be in the college football playoff rankings. They haven't beaten anybody of substance. Right. So you're kind of still – that will probably correct itself as the season goes along. Um, if you're Carolina, you use that as motivation. Hey, they don't believe in us. They don't. They didn't rank us. Vandy, same thing. But it'll it'll sort itself out. If if Vandy wins this week, they're in the yeah the rankings. If Carolina beats Vandy, they're probably they're in the probably top twenty-five in the rankings. rankings. Right. So. Yeah. At the end of the day, you can't worry about it too much. But if you're Shane Beamer or Clark Lee, you're sure as heck using it as much as you can. I, you know, one, one little complaint. I, I wish they would be more transparent about the strength of schedule metric. I mean, they use yeah. sports source analytics. I, I'm not trying to call anybody here. I, I did. I know somebody over there texted him last week, tried to ask and get ahead of that a little bit. I didn't get an answer. They may have a, you know, a, a deal with the. The NDA. committee where they, let's not talk about it, but I mean, come right. on, we're it, can we yeah. not can we not have some of that? I, I, I just I I think it does more good than harm to put those things out there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the Louisville one was kind of the strange one, right? Not that they're a, a bad team, yeah. but when you put them in, you kind of go, okay, it's not just a you know, but most yeah. they're the only three lost team, but at the same time, you compare them to South Carolina, right? And so. If you have a conspiracy theory in your head that, 
you know, I, I don't know. Louisville's not a name brand team, but just kind of odd, right? So yeah, um, it's it's fine, and you know, nobody should be too worked up about it at this point. If you're South Carolina, if you're Vandy, you know, go take care of business, and you'll eventually get your flowers by being in the rankings. I think. But by the way, this isn't an, an endorsement of the decision, but just trying to figure out what they might have been thinking. See, LSU, I know that was in Columbia. The Ole Miss loss, that was also in Columbia, right? That was, yep. Yeah, all of all of Louisville's losses are on the road. They came. Yes. Uh, I'm sorry, they, they lost to SMU at home. So two losses on the road, one at Notre Dame. And where was the other one? The other one was at Miami. So may, maybe that's your and beat And point. beat a, you know, team that, regardless of whether or not you agree, Clemson is in those rankings. So they have yeah. a road win. South Carolina, you know, has beaten Oklahoma and Kentucky, two teams that are not very good on the road, right? Those are those and, – and they were blowouts, right? But yeah, they weren't ranked wins, right? So yeah. um, that's probably – I mean, it, it makes sense when you dive into it, but there are arguments, you know, both ways, I think. Yeah, I, I keep a computer composite, and they were – Carolinas are about 15 right now, according to the national power rankings that I look wow. at. And uh, they're, yeah. they're the highest highest team that wasn't in there. So wow. take that for what it's worth. Anyway, yeah. I, I didn't mean to get you in the weeds on on a comparison to Louisville <laughs> and South You're Carolina. Good. You probably didn't have it on the bingo card coming into the morning. But, Chris, thank you so much for your, your time here. Uh, looking forward to catching up with you at some point later in the season, tell folks how they find your work. Yeah. Check us out. Gamecockcentral.com football recruiting, all the other sports as well year round. So appreciate you having me on Chris. All right. He's Chris Clark of Gamecock central. I'm Chris Lee of Southeastern 16. Thanks for watching. Remember hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, give us a watch following Saturday night's games about 10 30 central is usually when we live stream and run, run down everything that's happened and, and what's still going on as we go live. So anyway, for Chris Clark, I'm Chris Lee. You've been watching Southeastern 16 presented by Bet Online.